This video will explain the use of the Fire Alarm Symbols Library. In order to access the Fire Alarm Symbols, select Fire Alarm from the Auto System menu, and the Fire Alarm devices will appear. Fire Alarm devices all have alignment grips, so you can see that as you drag the device near a wall or near a line, it's going to align with that particular object. Drop it in. Uh, they have editable attributes for the device ID tags. Devices that use templates such as smoke detectors have built-in templates. Please note that these templates only apply at 1 8 inch equals 1 inch scaling. So if you are needing to do a drawing at a scale other than 8 inch, go ahead and set your attribute, your annotation scaling to 1 8 inch. And then once you're done with your drawing, you can um, reset your scale to whatever scale it is you want. But the templates will not be accurate at other scales. They're only accurate at 8 inch, so always use 8 inch scale for placement. Now the uh, notification devices also have templates. So we can place a device For example, if I were to place a device in this room, then I can look at it and determine which uh, candela I need. Go over here, select that, this drop down, and go to 30 CD. And the template stays on. This is helpful in being able to do layouts where you have overlapping devices that have overlapping coverage. Now, uh, the ceiling Horn strobes are based on ceiling height. So here you can see it's noted 10 foot, 20 foot, 30 foot. So depending on the height, the height would depend on the area of coverage with a ceiling strobe. So be sure you're selecting a ceiling strobe at the appropriate height for the ceiling within the room. Generally, the smoke detectors are showing us a, a 30 foot um, diameter circle, so 15 foot radius around the device, um, which will allow us to do quick placement. Again, you have to be aware of your ceiling conditions and so forth for special applications. But in general, this, this will allow you to do quick placement on a smooth ceiling. The uh, heat detectors. have about a 900 square foot box that surround them. Again, this is applicable if the entire area uh, is open, but if you have obstructions, obviously, you're going to have to place detectors closer together. Everything, obviously, has to, uh, has to comply with code, but um, just in general, the templates will allow you to quickly place things. Um, within the interface, uh, toolbar, tool palette, you will find flow and tamper switches, all kinds of interface with uh, sprinkler systems, door holders, uh, various monitoring modules, control modules, and then uh, the end of line resistor and smoke damper down here at the bottom. At the bottom of initiation you will find uh, a control panel and a power supply. And these uh, devices are adjustable the size is adjustable so you can set it, either set it here, let's say it's 18 inches by 6 inches deep. You can either set it using properties or you can simply drag it to the size you want it to be. Now once you have all your layout done, you can go into Fire Alarm Utilities and it gives you options. You can, you can freeze let me get rid of my quick properties here. You can freeze the notification templates. You can freeze the initiation templates. And for DD, you might not want to see the device ID tag, so you can freeze the device ID tags. Basically, all that then leaves is the devices and the candela rating of the uh, strobes visible. We can, I'm going to go ahead and thaw the ID layer. Note that the um, 
the ID tags, you can highlight them and drag them to another location. And we do have the circuit sequencer uh, feature available in this tool palette. By clicking circuit sequencer, you go down to the command line, it'll say uh, to select a target attribute from the first device in the sequence, which I will do. Enter a prefix number, in this case I'm going to say NAC1 dash, which will prefix the entire sequence. Starting sequence number, I'm going to leave it at 1, and then increment number by 1. Now you can see it's changed the first device to NAC11. I can go up and select subsequent devices and it will just continuously um, reset that text to NAC to whatever we want, basically. I mean, it just continuously increments by 1, so you'll get NAC1. 1, NAC12, NAC13, NAC14, so on and so forth. So that's kind of a handy feature for uh, numbering your devices. And I think that's basically all you need to know about the fire alarm symbols. There's nothing uh, particularly tricky about any of them. Uh, I guess in one sense the beam detector is a little bit different. Probably ought to look at that. With the beam detector you place it then you can grab the other end of the beam detector and place it on the opposite wall. And it draws a line between them. So the contractor can see clearly where you're trying to project the beam and how that, you know, basically how that's going to function. Aside from that, there's really not anything very tricky in here. Most of the blocks are pretty straightforward. And uh, with the use of the templates and the use of the various features within the FA utility uh, menu, it makes fire alarm layout pretty, pretty quick and pretty easy. Just always remember to do your layout at eighth inch. If you need to change your scale after that, go ahead and set your annotation scale to whatever scale you want. And um, that pretty much sums up the use of the fire alarm devices.